I greet everyone, the peace of the Lord Jesus. I invite those who can to kneel down. Let's begin our service. Praying to the Lord. Lord God, at this moment, your church prostrates before you. And together, Lord, we plead in a single voice for the power of the blood of Jesus. Lord, come towards our necessities. Lord, speak to our hearts. And especially, Lord, forgive our sins. Give us access to your eternity at this moment. And as we sing the songs, you may be, bring joy to our hearts. Move on, on our, act on the need of each one, Lord. And at the end of the service, we may live strengthened and aware that you are our God. We pray in the name of Jesus. And the church may be saved. to Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Already, we're going to have a word of adoration to the Lord. Glory to God. Praise because you are the one who has brought us to your house to comfort our souls, to offer a blessing, a victory, Lord, in your presence, Lord. Praise your name for your infinite love to your church that is going to go up to eternity with you. We we'll give you honor and grace for everything in the name of Jesus. Our children are going to be bringing a song. Praise to the Lord.
Glory to God. The praise of the children bring joy to the whole church. We're also going to have a couple of prayers by the children. Bless Alice, Benjamin, Gabriela, Talita, Caleb. In the name of Jesus, amen. Bless my daddy, bless my mom, bless my sister, bless, bless Caleb, bless Alice, bless Manuela, bless Benjamin, bless Talita, bless Grandma, bless in the name of Jesus, Amen. Let's bless Caleb. Thanks because you gave me uh, the food. <laughs> Thanks because because we are going to heaven. Thank because you gave me thanks in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's we plead for the blood of Jesus. Bless the church. Bless the service so that you may be a blessing and that we may go to heaven and learn something new from the Lord. Bless everything in the name of Jesus. Amen. Simple prayers. But they pray. Many adults forget to pray. But they already pray to the Lord. Bless be the name of the Lord. Let's continue praising the name of the Lord.
unto Jesus. Blessed be the Lord. Today is a day of salvation. Why not to give your heart to the Lord? Give your heart to the Lord. And He will take care of your entire being. We we'll continue praising the name of the Lord now in English. When I leave this world. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We're going to have also another word of adoration to the Lord. Lord, we want to praise your name because of this Jerusalem that is prepared for your people. We praise the Lord because we contemplate tonight the presence of the angels in this place. We praise you for the care of our God, for the great love that you have had with, for us, for the infirmities that have been healed, Lord, for each life that heard your voice in your house. We praise you because you are the one who has taken care of everything. Blessed be your name, in the name of Jesus. Amen. We greet everyone in the peace of the Lord Jesus. We invite those who can to stand up. We're going to open the word of the Lord and the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16, from verse 25 to 31. Acts 16. 
at 16. Sixteen from thirty-five to twenty-five from twenty-five to thirty-one. Amen. Is here on the projection. The word says the following. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and their prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundation of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's chains were loosed. So... And the keeper of the prison, awaking from sleep and seeing the prison's doors open, supposed to the prisoners had fled, had fled, drew his sword and was about to kill himself. But Paul called with a loud voice, saying, Do yourself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light, ran in, and fell down, trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? So they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household.
Jesus, in a certain point during his ministry, he, he says something interesting. He says the following for the woman of Samaria. He asked a question. And the question for the woman of Samaria was uh, he wanted to, she wanted to know where the why she could praise the Lord. And the Lord Jesus answered, saying, He's not here on this Mount Jersey in Samaria Samaria. And it's not in Jerusalem either. But the true worshippers will adore the Lord in, in spirit and in truth. And I tell you more, the Father looks for those who praise Him in this way by a re revelation of the Lord. Paul and Silas, these two men, went to a specific city and when, when they came to the city they were imprisoned. They were beaten and um, imprisoned inside of a prison in the lowest level and there they were with their feet shackled to uh, a beam of wood and at that moment and the Bible speaks of the period uh, the time was near midnight and there near midnight those men who were imprisoned they chose inside of the prison to make a service to the Lord and since we are here in the prison we are going to start a service to the Lord And why did they decide to um, start a service to the Lord? Because two things existed in their lives. And I asked uh, an usher here, and he answered those two things, faith and hope. 
the church when it's near midnight in prison it had faith and hope and it was hope and, and faith that moved those men to do a service in that place because it was faith in their Savior and the hope that their Savior was going to come and as it is described in the word he will come at midnight and at midnight there was a shout here comes the groom so there, there was a hope in the life of those men that the tears may last an, an entire night but the joy would come in the morning. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And that's why they were there praying. And that's why they were singing songs of praise to the Lord. And you who visit us tonight, in this prison, which is this, this planet, this land, where everyone were judged and they were all condemned, All those that were in that prison were judged and condemned. All of them. In the word of the Lord, in Isaiah 61 says the following. And Jesus came to bring freedom to the captive and opening of the prisons to the prisoners. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And the church was in that place exactly for that reason. To preach about freedom to the captive and open up the prisons to the prisoners. There were many who were imprisoned at that time. They were imprisoned to thoughts, act actions, beliefs, actions. They were imprisoned to situations. They were in prison because they have committed crime, crimes. All of them were there. And the church was also there. And the word tells my brethren that Paul and Silas, the church was singing, praying and was singing songs of praise to the Lord. And I'll ask the praise group here. I just asked. What is the song that you were singing at that moment there? What would you be singing, proclaiming at that place? It was a message of hope, of comfort, the refreshing, the relief. That's a message of the church, of the faithful church, as a message of hope, of comfort, and relief. That's why many times when our children sing, when our adolescents sing and our church sings, man's heart rejoices because the Holy Spirit at that moment lights up once again the faith and the hope. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And it was near, near midnight. And it was a moment for the church to be near midnight. And the word says, my brethren, that the church prays and sings. That's the role of the church, to pray and sing. Jesus liked, liked those two things very much, to pray and sing. When he went there to go up to the mount, he was singing a song to go up the Mount of the Olives. The role of the church is to sing and pray. And when the church sings and prays, God acts, God operates. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And as the brothers sat here during the period of praise, tonight is a night of salvation. The church was there to proclaim salvation in Christ Jesus. 
And the word also says, my brethren, that the, the church, when Peter and Silas, they were praying, and the, the other prisoners, they heard it. How many people are imprisoned here tonight? How many prisons? God. God wants to open so many prisons here. I already said the types of prisons. Uh, the types of condemnations. And the word says that we all sinned. We are all destitute from the glory of God. And the wage of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. And sometimes we think that we are going to stop on death. But the hope of the Lord is that everyone be saved. That's the desire of the Lord. That's the desire of God tonight, that everyone be saved. That everyone here will be delivered. And that everyone may see the doors opening up. So that the name of the Lord may be glorified. The prisoners, they were hearing the prayers and the songs of praise. But there was also the prison guard. The prison guard was sleeping. He was unaware of what was taking place. He didn't hear. He didn't hear the prayers. He didn't hear the songs of praise because he was sleeping. And many times, sometimes in this prison, the church is singing, is praising, the prisoners are listening, but there are those who are sleeping. There are people that are oblivious, they are insensitive. There are people that are not feeling the move of the Lord, the operation of the Holy Spirit of God, because at that moment, is, well, that was a moment of operation of the Holy Spirit in that place. And the word says, my brethren, that then the, the Lord decided to do something different. God has this kind of things that He sometimes does. In order to reach men, God can do different things. And the word says, my brethren, that when Paul and Silas, they were praying, was they were singing songs of praise to the Lord, there was an earthquake. And the word says, my brethren, that the foundation of the prisons, they moved. And when the church prays and glorifies the name of the Lord, there is an earthquake, there is a shaking. The Lord moves with these structures. You know why? To remove men from their prisons, to deliver men's heart, the minds of a man. God shook up the place. And that's what God wants to do with each one of us. He wants to move, shake up our structure, our feelings, the way we see things, the way we think, the way we act, our own human reason uh, and our limitations. The Lord wants to shake it up. I want to change this situation. Because salvation is a change of life. So then he shook things up. So, my brother, when I heard that thing, this moving of the Lord, the word says that when all the gates were opened, and they were all freed from their prison. If the Son delivers you, you will be truly free. I don't know what is our situation, my brother or sister. I don't even know who you are. What goes on in your life? What is happening? The type of prison in which you are? Because we are all imprisoned to something. Because what is important tonight is that the Lord is opening all the doors. 
the Lord is giving to each one here in the same way He did in the past an opportunity to be free, to be delivered, to be able to make a choice, to be able to take another destination, to go through a path, because they were all they were all prevented from doing that. We were all prevented from doing this. The sin prevented us. The sin brought us to prisons. So when Jesus comes with His blood, He delivers every man so that we may all be free, so that we may make a choice, an option. We have free will because prisoners, they have, an op they have no free will. He wanted to give that's what he wanted to give to each person that, that in that prison. The opportunity of, of being free to be delivered, to see gates that were closed for 10, 15, 20 years to be opened, to see the impossible take place in their lives. Because for those men, it was impossible for them to leave that place. It was impossible for them to have a hope, a dream. Because everything was summarized, summarized there, everything was behind the, the <coughs> prison bars. So now they were singing, praying, and through the movement of the operation of the Lord, they were all able to enjoy freedom. They could all be free. <coughs> They could all have a hope because in there there was a lack of uh, hope. And soon the doors were open and everyone went free. But how about the uh, prison guard? The prison guard continued in the same situation. He was also imprisoned. And not only him, but also his family that suffered. Uh, they were in the same predicament as he. <coughs> he was taking care of that prison for a very long time. And how many families are not in this situation? The, the, house, the head of the household is imprisoned. And the family is suffering because the head of the household is, is in prison. They were all under the same situation, under the same condemnation, their whole family. All of them without exception. And this is a month in which we are <coughs> praying for the families and for the family members. So that the Lord may give a blessing to all of us, to our entire household. Because the blessing of the Lord is not only for my life, but also for my family. It's not only for your fa for your life, but for your family's life. My brethren, when the prison guard he saw the gates of the prison open, he wanted to kill himself. But I tell you something: he didn't want to die but he wanted to kill himself. You know why? Because it was near midnight. And while all those prisoners were there, while Paul and Silas were there, he said, oh, now I'm, I'm safe. I'm safe. But when he saw that all the gates were open, he thought that everyone was, had already left. Now he got desperate. You understand? It was near midnight. The church will be raptured. So now I'm going to tell you something. Imagine everybody vanished and I was the only one left. And I would say, oh, the church was raptured. I lost my opportunity of being saved. Now I'm going to kill myself. Because the situation is going to be complicated. That's what he thought. Near midnight. Paul and Silas were not there. All those prisoners were not there. 
he was the only one left, he thought, I'm going to kill myself. So desperation took a hold of him. All hope left him of being saved. My brother and sister, after the rapture of the church, there is no hope. There is no second chance. You only go on the first opportunity and after, after that you will not go in. And the Lord is saying that this moment in which we are near midnight, near the end, the rapture of the church, the church is being praying. The church is being singing songs of praise to the Lord and God has acted, God has operated, God has opened up doors and God has delivered so that you may make a decision in your life and decision of being, being saved because the desire of the Lord is to save everyone because God loves everyone He does not love only the church He loves everyone because God loved the world in such a way that sent His only begotten Son so that whoever believes in Him may not perish but have eternal life Blessed be the name of the Lord. So the prison guard, he uh, was trying. He decided to kill himself because he lost all hope of being saved. But the church at that moment had a word for him. Hey, my brother and sister, the Lord has a word for you. Do not get desperate. Do not kill yourself. You know why? Because we are all here, blessed be the name of the Lord. The church is still here. And because the church is here, there is still hope. The Holy Spirit is still here. The project of God is still here. The people of that city, they didn't want a church. But the church was the hope of salvation for that city. The world doesn't want Jesus, but Jesus is the hope of salvation to the world. He's a hope for you, my brother and sister. And tonight, you who entered here in the house of the Lord, I don't know if you are in prison or if you are sleeping, but no one thing. God wants to operate. God wants to save. God wants to manifest His power, His grace, and His mercy upon your life. And God wants to deliver you. Don't do any ill to yourself because we are all here. So, my brother, when that man heard that, you know what the first thing that he asked? He asked for light. The people that were walking in darkness saw a great light and upon the valley of the uh, shadow of death, the light shone whatever is the prison of my life tonight the light of the Lord Jesus is shining upon us is dissipating any darkness is lighting up is showing is revealing the entire project of God for my for your life for all of our lives as for light and when in there he was outside. He was not part of that place. But when he, he asked for light, he jumped in. When man is reached by revelation, by the light of the Lord, he jumps in. He goes to the same place where the church is. The salvation is exactly this, is to meet together with the church because the church will be raptured. The church is the body of Christ. So then he asked for light, and then he jumped in. The desire of the Lord, my brother and sister, is that you jump in. Come to this side. Come to our side. Come to the place where God is listening to the praises. Where God is answering to prayers. Where God is manifesting His power, His grace, His favor, His love, His mercy. Through Christ Jesus. And he asked an interesting question at that day. Do you remember he wanted to kill himself? He wanted to, uh, he wanted to kill himself, but he didn't want to die. 
many times we're going through moments so difficult in our lives that we even want to kill ourselves. But in, in fact, we don't want to die. When you go to the edge of the bridge and you look, 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 you're, you're waiting for help. That somebody will help that person. That somebody will give a word of comfort and refreshing for that person, a word of hope to bring to that person a solution for the problem that that person is going through. Nobody jumps out of a bridge right away. And there's a time, there's a period. They keep thinking and they are also waiting for something to happen to change and take them out, out of that situation. Sometimes people say the following. Money is not a problem. Isn't it true? Money is money. <laughs> My English is not very good, but money is not a problem. And is a solution. No, that's not how it is. Money is not a solution. Money is not a solution. Christ is the solution. Christ is the solution. The solution for the prison guard was Christ. The solution for the, the prisoners who was was Christ. The solution for the church with Paul and Silas was Christ. Christ is the solution. And he asked, he asked what is necessary for me to save myself. That's all he wanted. Everything that he wanted, everything that the prison guard wanted was to be saved. And maybe you came here, my brother and sister, with many things in your, high, in your head, many thoughts, many desires, many feelings, even of pleasing the Lord, of bringing something, something material to, to uh, offer to the Lord as a thanks for what He has done in your life. But I'm going to tell you one thing. God doesn't need anything. He's God. Giving money to God for what purpose? What is He going to do with money? Give a house to God? <laughs> Give a plane, jet, a spaceship? How can somebody buy something that it, that belongs if everything belongs to him but god wants wants man to seek salvation in christ jesus the desire of the prison guard was not to die i will not die but i will live forever with the lord that's why he asked he asked a question Sirs, what must I do to be saved? So maybe now, my brethren, after listening to the songs, God has acted, operated in your life, on your behalf, on your benefit. God has already awoken you. He has brought you to the same environment, to the same place in the church. You may be able to, uh, may God place in your heart this desire. What? Sir, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to be part of the rapture? What must I do to take part in the wedding of the Lamb? What is necessary for me to do? So then Paul and Silas, they answer, and the answer is the following. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you believe in, in Jesus, you will be saved. Not only you, you and your household, that's the desire of the Lord. And you know what that man did that day? He believed in Jesus. When he presented himself before Paul and Silas, you know how he was? He was trembling. He was 
had already been shaken by the earthquake. He was shaking to that moment. Because God acts, when God operates, we are we tremble. And he was we went there trembling, because he knew that at that night, or near midnight, he was the target, target of the salvation. God had chosen at that moment to save the prison guard, and he opened up the gates of prison to everyone, give freedom to everyone. And that's what God wants to do tonight, to deliver everyone, save, free us up and save the ones who are still insensitive.
church will stand up. The Lord has revealed, revealed that a woman that she came here to the church and she wanted to give an offering to the Lord. And the offering was with the material things, with the things of this life. But the Lord has shown that the offering that He desires to receive from that woman is that she does in the same as Paul and Silas. Deliver, give your life to the Lord, trust in Him, and He'll do all things. The greatest offering that you can give to, your Lord, to God is your life. To give your heart to the Lord. And that's what He desired to receive from you. The Lord has shown a couple. And this couple, they... I'm going to give an illustration here so that it's easier to deal with the spiritual gift. This couple, they have probably participated. Uh, they have been a member of another denomination. They may have been a part of an organization or something. And in the place where they were, they, I could say, um, as a word is not as harsh. They may have been hurt. More, there was a misunderstanding, some problem, and that may have frustrated and caused them to be um, um, anxious about coming coming closer to the gospel and coming closer to the Lord once again. But tonight. The Lord is offering to this couple that is hesitant, something new. He is presenting to this couple the work of the Lord, the salvation in Christ Jesus. And when you taste of this, of what God is giving you tonight, your eyes are going to be open and the name of the Lord will be praised in your life. Amen. Let's pray, bringing the service to a close. Lord God, we praise you. We're thankful for, for this moment of fellowship and deliverance, of understanding of your plan, of your project. Lord, we glorify you because you have freed us once again, you have opened up all the doors. Lord, we have woken up to the prophetic moment in which we are living, of the rapture of the church. We glorify your holy name because of yet another opportunity that you give us to be here in this place and of hearing your voice, of singing songs of praise to your name. Blessed be your name, Lord, because the manifestation of your love and your grace, of your favor and your mercy upon our lives. And we plead, Lord, take us home in peace to our homes and your protection, we pray in the name, holy name of Jesus. In the name we say that wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our good and eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit, be with the, peop the entire people of God now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. You who are here with us, participating in the service, I want to tell you that you are welcome to this place. We have a service every Tuesdays and Thursdays at 8 o'clock at night, Saturdays at 7.30 p.m., Sunday at 10.30 a.m. on Sunday school, and a 6 o'clock youth meeting, and at 7.30 another service of glorification to the Lord. And also at Saturdays, we have a women meeting that takes place every Saturday at 6 o'clock of the afternoon. Amen. You are all invited. For the church, there is an instruction from the Lord. A fasting from zero, from midnight to 9 a.m. on Thursday and Friday. Thursday and Friday 
for a vigil that we're going to have here is Friday at 9 o'clock p.m. with the couples. So all, all the couples are going to participate on this vigil. They should do this consecration, uh, this period of sanctification on Thursday and Friday from midnight to 9 o'clock in the morning. You, the couple, you who are here from another denomination that came to visit us, if you desire, you are very welcome. Our desire is that you come. You have already been invited to come again. And tomorrow at 8 o'clock, we're going to have a meeting with the ushers and deacons. And yeah, we are all conclaimed to participate on the meeting. It's a conclamation for all the ushers, deacons, and pastors. Amen? And the men of the church, they are all invited to participate also. Uh, man, you can participate. You are welcome to come here. But the ushers, deacons, and pastors, they are conclaimed to participate. Amen? If you desire prayer, raise your hand. We are going to give you the proper assistance.